The Vegas Golden Knights draw first blood in their series with the Montreal Canadiens. Gentlemen, our coverage here on the fourth period brought to you by BitBuy, Canada's number one cryptocurrency platform. And I want to jump right into this, Dennis, and talk about the Vegas Golden Knights and getting offense from their defense. Yeah, Theodore Martinez Holden, game over. Garf, you get three goals from your defense in a Stanley Cup playoff game, you're winning that game. It's as simple as that. And from there, they just took off. They were the dominant team tonight. You know, it's talk about class. They were outclassed tonight, the Montreal Canadiens, and primarily because of the activation by the blue line of the Vegas Golden Knights. Yeah, you know, Montreal controlled the pace of play in the first six, seven, maybe eight minutes of this game. Their offense really shunned in the beginning, but then it was Vegas. They started to take control. They started to add the body. They were physical. They were quick. They were the ones that changed things. And for the rest of the, you know, whatever, 52, 53 minutes of this game, it was all Vegas. And when you're getting contributions, like DB said, from the defensive core, it makes it that much harder to kind of get back into the swing of things. Now, knowing that you've got to worry about those guys in the back end as much as you do those four lines. It was a tough one for Montreal, ultimately, feeling out process, but this was a very good performance by Vegas. Yeah, you mentioned the feeling out process. I mean, the Canadians were good in the first, like you guys mentioned, the first seven, eight minutes of the game. Obviously, Cole Caulfield, nice story, getting a goal there, his parents in the crowd. But from a Montreal Canadian standpoint, you can't always rely on Carey Price. So where does that offense have to come from, Dave? Yeah, you're right. It's, it's great having that guy between the pipes and the confidence there, but you need to be able to contribute. And sometimes you got to help bail out your goaltender as much as he's been bailing you guys out in front of him. So this is a, a tricky situation because Montreal hasn't had to face in the Jets and in the Toronto Maple Leafs a team as quick and as physical as the Vegas Golden Knights and as deep as well because they can help shut down the opposition so if you know montreal had been doing it before one night it's the old age guys the next night it's the young kids the next night it's the vets uh this is this this allowed them to get to this point but against vegas you need to have everybody clicking every night one guy for me that i need to see step up in this series is josh uh, excuse me josh anderson He's got, he had the first goal to open up the series against Toronto. We haven't seen too much from him from an offensive perspective in, in the rest of these playoffs. Montreal needs everybody getting going, but they definitely need a player like Josh Anderson stepping up. DB, we talk so much about Carey Price. Obviously, you know, a perennial Vesna candidate, one of the highest paid goalies in the National Hockey League. But the guy on the other side between the pipes, Marc-Andre Fleury, 15 consecutive postseason appearances for Marc-Andre Fleury. Are we talking about him enough? No, we're not. And in some areas, he's the betting favorite for the Conn Smythe, and he probably deserves it without another, you know, offensive explosion from a Stone or a Pacioretty. If they win the Cup, he's probably your Conn Smythe winner. So just, again, a, a big step up in class for the Montreal Canadiens, and tonight they were outclassed. But, yeah, Marc-Andre Fleury is not only a leader on the ice but off the ice as well. So there's no surprising that he's at the head of the pack with respect to Conn Smythe favorites. Gentlemen, thank you so much for this. As always, the Vegas Golden Knights looking to go up 2-0 on their series in Sin City on Wednesday night.